The Soldier Portraits project was a really large undertaking to digitise and make available around about 27,000 portraits of Queensland servicemen who embarked and served in World War I. The Soldier Portraits project came about because we looked at um, the Queenslander Pictorial Supplement, which was an eight-page pictorial supplement that got slotted into the weekend edition of the Queenslander newspaper, and it showed pictures of all aspects of Queensland life, both uh, regional, rural and life in the city. As some um, soldiers embarked to World War I, their portraits were taken by the Talma Photographic Studio. They set themselves up at the Inogra enlistment camp, set up a tent, and soldiers who enlisted at Inogra had their portraits taken. It became wildly popular, and so another studio, the Fegan Studio, also came on board to take portraits. One of the um, outcomes of the QANZAC 100 project was to leave a digital legacy. So we wanted to make really high quality portraits of these soldiers available to leave a really strong digital legacy, both for a record of how Queenslanders served in the Great War, but also to make it easier for families to connect themselves to their family members who may have served in the war. Well, being two and a half thousand uh, pages uh, that obviously meant that there was going to be a lot of a lot of scanning or a lot of digitization to be done so what was decided early in the piece was to send those pages out to the outsource vendor and get them to scan uh, the individual page but at a very high resolution so then we would then take those full size uh, scans that still allowed us to come in and crop each individual soldier portrait out at our standard resolution, which uh, for the State Library was 400 pixels per inch. The file being that big allows uh, individuals to print them at much larger than the postage stamp size that they originally were. In fact, if you wanted to use them on the side of buses, in a, you know, the big vinyls that they put on the side of buses for advertising, even outdoor projections onto the side of buildings, the resolution is, is perfectly uh, sized to be able to do that and still not lose any quality. What State Library wanted to get out of this project was an individual portrait for each one of those 27,000 soldiers with their name on it and any metadata we could find, any, any further information we could find out about that soldier. So what we did was to um, start conversing with the National Archives of Australia which hold all of the service records of um, Australians who served in the First World War. And they were really excited about it because they had all of these records but they didn't have any pictures. We had pictures with names um, but we didn't have their service records so we worked in partnership with them to try and make connections between our servicemen and their service records and that's a really great outcome because then when a person finds the the portrait in our catalogue they can immediately go and have a look at their service record and also when they find their service record in the National Archives they can immediately find their portrait so it brought both of those collections to life and um, ensured that sort of ongoing digital legacy. So we have a team of 15 volunteers and they are working with the digitised portraits and the records from the National Archives. And so the volunteers are going through and uploading the soldier portrait, uh, the embarkation roll from the War Memorial and any articles that they find about the soldier in Trove. So it's really about making those links and making the discovery process easier for people who are looking for their soldier. So our job is to match the portrait to the military record and the embarkation record. And we have, as volunteers, we've managed to match 5,000 of those. And uh, that's represented 1,667 hours of volunteer time, which is, gives you an idea of the massive size of the project. The portraits have been used in lots and lots of ways, um, particularly around the celebration and, and commemoration of Anzac Day in 2014, 15 and 16 by organisations across the state who wanted to make connections to Anzac stories from servicemen and women who had lived in their town. 
these images have been really popular with graphic designers and people who are organising events for the centenary of the First World War, people who are publishing books or putting together presentations that need really high resolution images for their work. The Courier Mail did a fantastic mosaic, thousands of portraits and it was interactive and you could scroll right in and it was a, a soldier from Toowoomba who actually lied about his age and um, didn't make it home. His portrait is made up of thousands and thousands of all the others and so it's, it's on a really grand scale. Also around Brisbane, the City Cat Ferries used um, portraits from our collection as like decals and on the ceilings of the ferries and also on the sides of buses as well for the Anzac Centenary in 2015. But I think for me the most important uses have been in connecting families to their family members. Uh, probably one of my favourite stories is the story of an Indigenous serviceman called Valentine Hare who had served in World War I and then had really disappeared when he came back from the family. And Logan Library did a, a wonderful project to look at Indigenous stories from servicemen who have connections to Logan. And through that process, the local studies librarian there was able to find our portrait of their serviceman. Um, his name was Valentine Hare. And for the first time in her life, this woman was able to see a good quality image of her uncle. And she was holding onto this portrait and it was really the connection between this long distant family member that she'd never known or seen um, was a really meaningful experience from, for her. And that's probably one of my favourite stories. I hope that opens up a discovery for other families to find out about their soldier relatives. I can already see what potential there is for future searches and the thrill of finding a photograph of your relative that's digitised and free is, is pretty wonderful. Yeah. My hope for the future is that these soldier portraits are not just going to be used during this commemorative period, that they'll have a long-term life, um, that they'll be used for generations to come, for people to connect with individual stories of servicemen and women who uh, served in the war from Queensland. We're releasing all of the portraits and the data that's attached to the portraits for reuse, and we see some really creative things that are done by historians and researchers and digital scholarship and also artists and creators, and my hope is that that they will be used in those innovative ways for a really long time.